on fish and the myth, the myths of rod bends and shape. We have a groper. <laughs> okay, so big yellow grouper. Why, why is it important about how we fight fish? Just have a look at the the, the slogan of the FFI on your shirts there. Conservation, restoration, education. Conservation is about landing fish quickly and releasing them in good condition. So we use the heaviest tippet we can get away with for the circumstances and we land fish quickly, unless of course we're fishing for records. See the fish in there. <laughs> so landing fish quickly means understanding how much pressure we're putting on that end. Not how much pressure is on me here, but how much pressure is on the fish. And I came about this, well they put pressure on a fish like this, and they break the rod because they think they're putting a lot of pressure on the fish. But the reality is they're putting a terrible bend into the rod. They're bending it at its weakest part. Peter, before you start, how, what, what pound tipper do you have now? Oh, uh, it's 40 pounds. 40 pounds. So I just wanted something that wouldn't break. Because <laughs> I'm going to be putting a lot of pressure on it. So, it's a good point from Dr. Ling. If you were fishing a very light tippet, then a bend like this, I'm right to remember, I'm right hand wide, then a bend like this is a reasonable thing. Is that registering on the scale yet? Uh, slightly. S slightly. What yeah. like? Uh, well, it hasn't gotten to zero kg. So I'm s in the scales, it's not even pulled it to zero kgs. Yet look at the bend. What about now? You're at zero kg. I'm at zero kgs. Point two, point, almost point two. Almost point two of a kilo. Now, if this was a carbon fiber rod, what would happen? Bang. Yeah, it's a visit to the warranty shop. If you got a sage, you got a warranty. You know, understand that. If you break it, it's okay. They'll repair it. Okay. So the other point of this. Now I want you to slip that off the off the scales, please. Wrap it or put the loop in your finger. So the other point of this, the other side of this, is when we set the hook. Who hears fish for sailfish in Rompen? You know, you know how ineffective. What's this called? Trout strike. Look, well, put that back on the scales. Sorry, mate. So a trout strike. What did that go to? Point two and a half kg. 0.25 kilo. A quarter of a kilo. Okay. So we're going to set the hook like this. So barramundi, permit, saltwater fish with hard mouths. I'm going to strip strike. One and a half kg. One and a half kilos, that's all. I got a 40 pound tip. There's a strip strike. Three and a half kilos. That's enough pressure to stick the hook in. As opposed to lifting the rod. When would you lift the rod? When would you set the hook like that? With the trout. Yeah, uh, soft mouthed fish. Fish with soft mouths and small hooks. It's fine to set the hook like that. But with bigger, heavier, thicker wire gauge hooks, and hard mouth fish, we want a strip strike. Once, twice, with the rod pointing straight down the line. Okay, so we've got our setup. Bang. Hook is in the fish. Fish is running. It's okay to keep a high rod when the fish is running. Unless it's something like a GT that's going for the reef and we want to stop it. But if it's a clean fighting fish like a sailfish, Queenfish, mackerel, it's just going to run. We can afford to just keep the rod high. There's a lot of pressure on the fish from the, from the line in the water, from this line ripping through the water. There's a lot of pressure on the fish. What do we do when a fish gets two, 300 metres of line out? I see guys tightening the drag. That's trouble. That's going to break it off. You're going almost into free spool. I just palm the spool because there's so much pressure from this line in the water, from that fish towing the line in the water. You see on the sailfish over here, the small sailfish, when you're using a sinking line and they try and jump, and the weight of the line just pulls them back into the water. Mm. Okay, there's a lot of water pressure on that line. 
But then when the fish stops running, you've got to turn around and get it back. You're not going to do this. I'm going to start. So has anyone here fish for the black bass in... Is Tim Nantai here? Where's Tim? Got black bass in Borneo or uh, Indonesia or mangrove jacks. Fish you have to pull out of cover or fish that you really need to fight hard like tuna when they get up and down. You can't fight a tuna with a rod like this even though you're going to be up and down. You've got to start putting a lot of pressure on that fish. So we'll go with the mid band. What is that registering now? Pull it. A pollen. It's 0.02. 0.02. Three kilos. That's all. Look at that. This is a nine weight. Fiberglass nine weight. So that gives you an idea of how little pressure you're actually putting on a fish. Now my belief, and I, I like to be really careful about doing this because if he lets go of those scales or those scale breaks, it's going to be like a missile. Okay, so I'm going to pull this to the side. I'm going to, from my experiments with bending rods against a set of scales, you should be able to pull nine pounds with a nine weight rod, eight pounds with an eight weight rod, and so on down the scale. That's a sort of pretty, that's a high point. So a 12 weight rod, you're really only pulling around 12 pounds. So I flattened that rod out. Where's the bend now? It's here in the strongest part of the rod. Four and a half kilos. And a half kilos that's nine pounds in a wrung out rod. So that's putting a lot of pressure on the fish. And when we get up and down, now could you dive for the... No, it's okay. You're right. <laughs> Don't put your head under in that water. So up and down on a fish, if we put this rod in the water, it's not going to melt. It's not going to dissolve like sugar. So I see guys fighting fish with the fish close to the boat and they're up and down. And they'll keep the rod... I'm going to come around here. Just take the, the scales down and into the water. Keep the rod up like this. Get the rod tip down into the water when you're up and down on a fish. Now I use a technique that I... <laughs> a technique that I call inch by winch on really big fish or really stubborn fish. So inch by winch means I, I'll just step back a little, means I'll just use body pressure. See that? Body pressure, come forward, take half a turn or an inch of line at a turn. So I'm never taking the pressure off the fish. I've got my foot in its throat and I'm not taking it off. Sometimes you can actually move back. Yeah? I normally do pull, pull, pull back. Pull back, back. You don't, don't need to. Yeah. Sometimes I, I actually. Yeah. I'm I'm only doing this because I, because he's not he's too stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> he's not moving. So I'm just looking. See that pressure never comes off. Stay. What I don't want to be doing is this. Yeah. So when I've done this, what's the pressure done? Oh, uh, it, go ahead and do it some more. Because we're just barely registering. We're not even registering on the scale. Yeah. However, if I'm doing this, what am I on? You're on uh, 3.2. Still? That's surging. Yeah, now you're almost at 4. Now I'm going to 4 kilos. So I'm only gaining a little bit of line at a time. I'm not aiming for big pump and winds like this. Yeah. Because the pressure is coming off the fish. I like to get the pressure on them, keep it there, and don't let up. Okay, that's it. Any questions? No, 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 we have to go longer, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> have to go longer, okay. Side strain. Why, why, why can't you direct the, without putting Things any really bend. start to break then. And we've got a rod, we want to use the rod. The rod is our safety barrier. Okay, so a fish, a good question, Link. So a fish like a permit. What was the question? Why don't I just point the point the rod at the fish? Because now I have, apart from a bit of stretch in the line, I have no safety barrier. With this here, if the fish shakes its head, it's just going to pull a little bit of bend into the rod. 
But with some fish, so for example, uh, so permit, when you get a permit about this close, about as close as Mick is, they put in a lot of violent head shakes and sudden changes of direction. They'll go this way, then they'll turn and very quickly go back that way. Do you want a flat rod when you're doing that with nothing left in it? No, you get a high rod. The fish is beaten. He's just playing his last hand of cards to see if he can get rid of whatever's bothering him. So at that stage, you've got the fish beaten, but this is when most of them are lost. Because they don't back, so you get a high rod. Now if the fish shakes its head, give us some head shakes. <laughs> oh, the rod, the rod absorbs all the head shakes. Okay, so there are times when you do fish with a high rod. Particularly when the fish is beaten and you've got this closing. You know, so many of them are lost in this last bit here. And you're closing the fight out. Then get your rod up. Um, the other point I wanted to make was about side pressure. I see people talking about, put, put side pressure on the fish. You put more pressure on the fish. So what's the difference between there and there? None. Nothing. But what side pressure does is affects how the fish can swim. So you pull it from you pull it from straight overhead and it can just keep swimming away from you. You, you pull it from the side and you're gonna pull it this way. And then when you pull it this way, it's gonna come back that way and you go back this way. That's why we put side pressure on a fish to mess with its ability to swim. The most effective pressure you can put on a fish, the absolute deadly pressure, is actually from underneath the fish. Like that. When you you'll flip it over, you'll pull its head down and it'll somersault and they can't swim. It absolutely destroys their morale. Okay, to pull them from underneath. So I'll get right underneath them like this, flip them over, big GTs, permit. Any sort of fish, particularly if there's a little bit of reef around that they might want to get to. Pull them from underneath. I do it on trout in New Zealand and it just, it destroys them. It destroys their morale. Suddenly they, hey, they're doing somersaults in the water. Okay? Is that it? You, had, you called off? Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, mate.